Greetings, and welcome to episode 14, part 3 in my Spiritual Path series. Uh, where we left off yesterday, we're going to kind of try and merge the two other videos in, and, and get my full take on what I believe the Spiritual Path is, and is not. Uh, and all the things that are entailed in that sphere of involvement. There's just, I don't want to chase off the, those on the religious path because this information is valid for you also. Just like I don't want to, I wasn't trying to scare off spiritual people from the Bible. Uh, it just, a lot of things that need to be discussed and I think that a three part series isn't enough, but I do believe that this is going to be the last part of this series. We'll probably pick it back up again later. But for now, we'll just go ahead and close out this series with three parts. So uh, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, round three. So the spiritual path, what it means to me is just learning. It's learning. It's not accepting at face value. It's not accepting somebody else's word for it. I don't care how good it sounds to me. I'm going to research it. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to dig a little deeper and find out where they got their ideas from. Because until I believe it, it's just an idea. Until I can put it into practice and get it to work, it's just an idea. And I hear a lot of ideas. A lot of them. And a lot of them sound really good. And it's just like, it just, it can't be that simple. I'll switch your diet to vegan. Eat all natural. Do this, do that, quit smoking, exercise. I get that. But it cannot be that simple. There's no diet for the spiritual path. There's just there is no diet for the spiritual path. There isn't. They say, well, if you want to be in tune with nature, you tune into nature. You don't have to I mean every food we eat is from nature. Well <laughs> given the fact that it's mass produced and horribly modified. It's still somewhat natural, which which begs the question, are they trying to purposely remove us from nature? Is that what they're trying to do? Take nature out of the equation? Oh, nature's too unpredictable. Yeah, I think, sounds like that's what they're trying to do. But you don't know, going to the store and you're buying your vegetables and you're buying your fruits, you don't know if those have been modified. They're not labeled. They're not even, it's not even a law that they have to label it yet. So, you could be just as far removed from nature as I am, by your count of it, or you could just tune into nature and stay in that frequency this way. And I'm not giving people a good excuse to eat what you like and do what you like, blah, blah, blah. What I'm saying is, there is no spiritual menu. There's no menu somebody came down to earth and said, this is what you have to eat. Because I'd like you to dig up those two stone tablets, if that is the case. I want to see those stone tablets myself of shit you can and cannot eat. That's not part of the spiritual path for me. It has nothing to do with what you eat, the way you walk, the way you talk, how you dress. If you have a sense of humor, whether it's dirty and perverted or a straight sense of humor or any type of sense of humor, whether you don't have a sense of humor, your path is for you. My path is not your path. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you should smoke and eat bacon. <sighs> but I will tell you, I smoke and I eat bacon. I like vegetables. I like fruit. I like meat, not just fish, not just chicken. Uh, no, there's, there's no way you can have a path to spirit and then say rules, 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 rules. That's the whole point. 
The whole point is to discover your path for yourself. And if you come up with rules, 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 I'm not walking my path anymore, I'm walking yours. And any person that stands up and says, I know your path better than you, that person has become the problem in your life. If that person says, I can point out certain things you might like to try, but I'm not going to judge you if you don't try them, that person is probably going to be super helpful and maybe take what you need and leave what you don't. But I'm never going to tell you you got to eat a certain way. Don't stick food in your ear. How about that? I'll be fine with that. <laughs> Whatever it is you're eating, don't stick it in your ear. <laughs> it's not what you're wearing. It's be standing there naked. What is the difference? Because if you're judging a person on their outward manifestation, isn't that kind of the point of the spiritual path is to learn the inner journey and to focus on someone else's outer journey? That's just outward expression of the self. I don't like what they're wearing. That's okay. You don't have to like what they're wearing. But you also don't have to point it out to that person. Or make that person feel bad that you don't like what they're wearing. Or anything. Because you not liking how somebody else dresses. No matter how spiritual you claim to be. No matter how spiritual they claim to be. It's not a problem. I don't like how some people dress sometimes. You become the problem when you walk up to that person and point it out. It's not your business, their personal expression. I'm, let me repeat myself. It's not your business, their personal expression. If they have no personal expression, if they have no sense of style, that's their path. It's not for anybody else but them to decide, hey, I'm going to try that. If you walk up to somebody, hey, you should try this, and you shove a bunch of clothes in their hands and do up their makeup for them, and da, 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 you've just opened their cocoon. And now they're never going to be able to fly unless they're on your back or on somebody else's back that's good with the ideas because you've now just taken away their ability to, to decide for themselves what's good in their life. You'd be surprised. It's not what you look like. I don't find myself particularly attractive, but I still walk the path. I don't find myself ugly by any means, but I don't find myself particularly attractive. But there are people that have probably some better knowledge than myself, better knowledge than probably I've ever heard or you have ever heard, but they won't make videos and they won't write books and they won't be on TV because they're embarrassed of what they look like because that's the kind of society we live in. And we all judge on looks, even if it's just a tiny little bit. That's that uh, what we see, that's our first impression of that person. And our first impression of a person, that's usually, people say it's, it lasts the longest. Usually what we do is we have a first impression and then we say, well, that was rude. And we, have a, we give them a, a second chance, almost, almost instantaneous. Most of us. Some people have that first one and stick to it, which is okay. If you don't like what somebody looks like, that's okay. When you walk up and point it out to that person, then you become the problem. So, we're moving down the road still. Still, still down the path. We know there's no menu. We know there's no dress code. And we know that it doesn't matter what you look like. The color of your skin. Uh, doesn't matter if you're black. Doesn't matter if you're white. I don't pander to racists. 
I don't care for racism. That's why I don't subscribe to the conscious community because it's predominantly black people, melanites, which isn't the bad part. The bad part is about 90% of them somewhere along the lines, somewhere along the lines in their, in their videos, in one or more of their videos, they start spouting some racist doctrine or another. And I can't subscribe to that. I kiss, I can't. I grew up in the military. When you grow up in the military, as long as you're cool, you're cool. That's, that's the way I grew up, and I'm not going to change that. You know, you got to be down for this. No, that's not how the path works. You're trying to take a good thing that we try to keep it nameless on purpose. I only call it the spiritual path to have something to call it. Because once you name it, it becomes a religion, and then it becomes a political tool, like the conscious community has become a political tool. Because they named it the conscious community. <laughs> it is not, by any means, the only conscious community. But far and away, it is the most contradic contradictory. Because it says love and light and peace and shine and but not those people. So I can't I can't get in on that. I can't get in on bashing anybody, not for their race, not for their faith. If you're a Muslim, good on you. You're a Christian, good on you. Buddhist, any religion you can think of, I don't have a problem with it because I know that even though a lot of these religions were taught wrong. They're rooted in the basis of creating a connection to source and maintaining it. <clears throat> to me, the path and all of these books, it is the blueprints and maps for the evolution of our entire species. Not just one race, not just one culture, but the entire species. And... If you let something like that devolve into a religion, it becomes stagnant because now it's no longer about your connection to source. It's no longer about moving forward as an entire race. It becomes about taste great, less filling. Taste great, less filling. I can't get into that. I know what I believe about the world. But I also know enough to let other people have their beliefs also. So I'll never probably get into political debates concerning religion because politics and religion should have never been mixed. Matter of fact, back in the day, politics was religion. All you had to do was win their belief system over and you had them. Well, it kind of works that way today, but it's separated from politics not by very much but it is or it wouldn't work as a control unit for the people people would say you know what good you're a Christian whatever what are you going to do for the people as a whole but see the way the politicians try to spin it to add to that taste great less filling argument is I'm a Christian and I'm talking to you Christians and this is what I'm going to do for Christians. And he, the Christians that get whipped into it for friends, oh, we got a Christian in the house, and he's going to do what we want as Christians, and they use that faith. That's worse than saying, well, I'm going to flip, fix all the streetlights, and he didn't fix the streetlights. They come in with your faith and say, I'm going to do something based on your faith, and then don't. Wow. That's abuse of faith, not just abuse of trust. I trusted you with my faith. And this is what I got from it. So you, those two should be separate. Matter of fact, yes, religion and politics should be separate. But religion should be about the spirit. I should be able to say religion and everyone agree that it's about creating and maintaining your connection to source without a middleman. Free to journey and learn and meander and see what 
the wonders that were put here to be seen. The Creator created this. Every ghost, every dimension, every UFO people talk about, it's demons. No, 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 no. These are the wonders that He put here for us to discover and learn from and move forward as a species as we move from superstition into wisdom. And most people are stuck in the political superstition of it all. Even some people on the path get stuck in politics, but they know enough to separate the two. And that's another thing. Being spiritual doesn't mean you can't dabble in politics. I personally try to stay away from politics because I'm of the understanding, and most of us are, we have these long, lengthy discussions about how the president's just a puppet, and the governor's just a puppet, and Congress is just puppets, and this and that, and they're, they're bought and paid for, and blah, 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 blah. But then when they do something, <laughs> and the news says, look what Obama did, you say, Obama, even though we just had a two-hour discussion about how Obama's not really in charge. <laughs> It is amazing. That's why I stay out of politics, because we'll have one discussion, and then you'll turn around, and the next day after the news says something, we'll have a completely different discussion about the same damn topic, about the same damn political figure. So I just stay out of it because it's bullshit. I don't go to the news to get spoon-fed my opinion. Obviously, some people do. So I stay out of politics. It doesn't make me less spiritual because I'm not into politics. It doesn't make me more spiritual because I'm not into politics. Likewise, it doesn't make you more or less spiritual because you are into or out of politics. That's that's the path. So let's let's backtrack. What do we got? We've got no menu. No dress code, no aesthetics guidelines, no politics, no name. It's got no name. The path is the path is the path. I'm a Buddhist. Oh, you're on the path. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, you're at the beginning of the path. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I see religion as a jumping off point. Yes, it's a great place to start, but like I said, these things were blueprints and maps on how to evolve an entire race of, of people. The entire species was supposed to get as far along as Jesus. The entire species. Not just one person, not just a handful of people. It ain't a miracle that some of us have made it. No, it's hard work. It was through effort, great effort, that I got this far. That's not to say that sometimes I disregard the information I get and go the wrong way, maybe on purpose to see what's over there, so maybe I could have got here a little quicker, but that's not the point. I am a human, and that's how humans learn. Do you touch the stove, and, oh, that's hot. Let me see one more time. Oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I could have gotten to this point a lot quicker. But there's just so much to see, and you get off on a tangent, and, yeah, it leads to a dead end. But it was really fun learning what you learned down that road. I, and like I said in the previous videos, we're, it, it, it feels like whatever is coming, that something big is coming, and whatever it is, we need to be prepared for. And it's coming faster and faster and faster. Like we're running out of time. So I don't take the side trips anymore. Because I don't have, I get the distinct impression that I no longer have the time to meander like I used to. Which is fine, I'm okay with that. I hope you guys are okay with that. I hope, I hope if you get that feeling like time is speeding up and I'm running out of time, don't get overwhelmed. Take a deep breath. You only have to do the tasks that you feel in your heart that were assigned to you. It was none of our responsibility to save the world or anybody on it. Your only responsibility is to yourself and then reflect that out to the people so that they can see that it can be done. And don't stand up and say, ha, 
I did it. Stand up and say, look, if I can do it, I know you can do it. <laughs> That's what it takes, that humility. They don't want you talking down to them. They need you lifting them up. I did it, and I don't think that highly of myself. I know you can do it, because I think a little bit high, more highly of you than I do myself. And that's a fact. Most of my friends are a notch above me. Just because. Wow. They called me friend. Boom, notch. Instant notch. Now, that doesn't get you any discounts at the store, but it's a good warm feeling. Kind of like wetting your pants. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the path. <laughs> so, we're walking the path again. We're getting down the road. What else have I learned? Okay, it's got no name. It's got no menu. It's got no dress code. What else does it have or not have? There's no stringent requirements. Don't eat on this day. Eat on that day. Eat two days from Tuesday, but not on a full moon. None of that. No rules. No rules. You are required 100% to take responsibility of your journey. No go-between. No hand-leading. No spoon-fed ideas. It is your responsibility. If you accept these spoon-fed ideas like, Oh, don't try it out. Just, just take what I've given you and run. And don't look back. And don't listen to anybody else. If that's you that does that, you're not taking responsibility for your journey. You're letting somebody else take responsibility for your journey. And you're missing the point. Oh, I went down that path. And it was bad. No, 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 no. You did it wrong. You let somebody else take responsibility for your journey. That's like saying to somebody, you know what? Here's my paycheck. Why don't you pay my bills with the money? And when he runs off and spends all your money and comes back and says, dude, I got like five bucks left and all your bills are due. And then you freak out on that person when it's your responsibility to pay those bills. But now you've put the responsibility on somebody else and when they didn't handle it, you want to blame them. Like those of you on the religious path, if you're, if you're waking up to what I'm saying and, and you're seeing that even just the slightest bit of it is true, you bear some of the responsibility of what happened to you on the religious path. And I'm not even telling you to leave the religious path. I'm telling you, keep re-looking, re-reading, re and, and study out from it. Don't just divert. Study out from it. Because there is a lot of valid things on the religious path. And there are a lot of people on the religious path that are on the religious path for a reason. Everyone gets a different assignment. I know my, di my assignment's different from yours. I know that, and it took me a long time to see it too, that everyone has that feeling like, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, I gotta save the world. It's not to save the world. Yes, the world is in peril. Not, and I'm not saying the planet, I'm our world, what we consider our reality. The way we live our lives, our culture, is in peril because of the way we live our lives and because of our culture. What I'm saying is ease back that overwhelming sensation that it's your job to save 7 billion people. Your job is to save one person. You. Reflect out to the world how you did it. And maybe give a little bit of advice. But that is it. That's pretty much why it's called a path in the first place. And not a road. Because it's an individual journey. Each path is based on the interpretation of the person walking that path. It's based on your own unique perspective of the world around you and your interaction with the world around you. That's why each path is different. That's why you're not going to get to where I'm at on my path when you get this far. Because we have different experiences guiding us. I don't care if our roads curve at the same time, at the same place, and we're both there at the same point, at the same time. 
you're not going to be experiencing what I'm experiencing because my relationship to source is different than your relationship to source. So how can you begin to save 7 billion people who are on a completely different journey than you? Granted, we're all going to meet up at the same place later. But that's not the goal. The goal is the journey. Is what you're learning on the way there. Because I guarantee you, once we get there, we're all going to look at each other, and we're all going to say, let's do it again. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to take a different path. Because we won't be the same person we were when we started the path in the first place. So how can we possibly walk the same path? Let's do it again. <laughs> I cannot wait when we all get there and we all say, and we all apologize for being dicks to each other and say, well, let's do it again. That's going to be like the greatest day. But yeah, that's what the path is. It's a path of evolution. You come to the understanding on your own of where you would like to be in the future. Where would you like the future of humanity to go? You're not going to be able to decide that walking in a group. Because then you get the group mind. And one person might have a really good idea. And then everybody else in the group will discount their own idea because that one person. When if you would have said your idea, everyone might have liked your idea. But you didn't say your idea because you liked his idea. Oh, yeah. I guess that's better than my idea. Whereas if each one of us was walking a separate path, we'd all evolve along the lines of how we would like to see our species evolve. And the further we walk on our own separate path, the more you'll see that we agree more than we disagree and then it's not group mind mentality then it's uh, what would you call it when every single soul on the planet agrees with the direction that we're going to be heading what is that called I call it kick ass, but there's there's got to be a scientific term for it. <laughs> Eventually, 1,500 years, which tells me we could have been there now. So in about 1,500 years, and I hope to God that it goes a lot quicker than that, in 1,500 years, we'll all be walking our own separate path and notice that we're not are we not only are we walking in the same direction but we're all walking to achieve the same the exact same goals with where we want the race to be where we want the planet to be what we want our our relationship to the earth to be what we want our relationship to the solar system and, and galaxy to be this is what the path is for it's not just self discovery on who am I in these clothes when I go to work and when I get home and to all my friends, but who am I in this suit to the planet? Who am I in this suit to the solar system? Who am I in this suit to source? All of these dictators that say, everybody needs to think the same way and do what I want, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. They have the right idea, but they're doing it wrong. They're trying to preempt evolution. We will get there naturally and by choice. By choice. I, all, I like to say it this way. <clears throat> say you run a daycare. And they're all toddlers, but they're not walking yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. And suddenly, one day, one of the kids... You say you got five or six kids, and suddenly one day, one of the kids gets up on his two walking sticks and just has at it. And then that one kid decides everybody needs to be walking too, whether or not they're ready, whether or not they want to. And he forces all the rest of the kids to get up and walk. That first child that learned how to walk has now become the problem. See, what he should do, and what I would do, 
I would stand up and dance and moonwalk and run and jump and just show them how much fun it is to be up on your legs, to be walking around. Because that's how you do it. And then you, the kids see that. Well, look at that. He's having a blast. And then they're going to stand up. And they're going to be walking around. And then nobody's the problem. Well, you're the daycare provider's problem because now you're all up and walking. And now, oh, my God, they're getting into everything. And that's probably what God is thinking. Too. Oh, my God, they're getting into everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you see my point. Once you try to force this way of being, you become the problem. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's a good idea. It doesn't matter if that's eventually where we're going to end up anyway. We need to end up there naturally without outside assistance, without mechanical assistance, without chemical assistance. We need to choose to be on the path of discovery. That's what it is. It's a path of discovery. You're discovering yourself versus the planet, versus the solar system, versus the universe. And then while we're walking, we can take little detours and come together and shit, compare notes, just trade ideas. But as soon as one or the other of you says, it's got to be this way, you become the problem. And everyone should see that and walk right on past that guy. Because he's no longer discovering, he thinks he's there. And there is no there. It's a process that will continue for eternity. Once we get to that place where we're all in one, one voice and one people and we can move mountains with our minds and woo, it still won't be over. It'll still be everyone on their solitary journey because I'm noticing how hard it is to evolve when we're all in this scrunched up little group and everyone thinks the same there's no room for someone to think different and as soon as someone thinks different you burn them at the stake or you or you banish him so if everyone's walking their own separate path even when we make it instead of this one little globule it'll be a spread out commune community and everybody will just agree and then that one person that's ready to evolve will evolve and everyone will say wow look that toddler's up walking. <laughs> and then we'll join him. But that, in my opinion, is the purpose and meaning of the spiritual path. Even though that is not the name I give it, that is the name I use to convey my information to you. But, uh, yeah, I like this video. And I'm glad I left it at three, or I'm leaving it at three. But, uh, yeah. I, uh, if you stopped by to check this out and you enjoyed it, please click the like button. Favorite it if you want. And if you would like to get more information, or just maybe you just like the, the sound of my voice, hit the subscribe button and come on back. But, uh, yeah, until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>